Hi everyone and welcome along to Sonic Academy's How to Use Logic Pro 10 Level 2. Uh, this is now the continuation of Level 1. Level 1 we built a very simple track. We uh, used a plugin called Kick to program a kick drum. We used, uh, brought in some samples, premium samples into uh, EXS24. Then we brought in a drum loop and we uh, flex timed that. We also made some uh, Bases and chords and plucks using three different synths, stock synths within Logic. And then finally we looked at drummer tracks and bringing in uh, some Apple loops. So we should have a, a very basic understanding uh, of the workflow within Logic and how it works and, and how to get sounds generated. It's now time to take uh, this knowledge to the next level. In fact, the next level being level two. Uh, uh, we're going to start looking more in depth at effects now and reverbs and uh, <clears throat> frequency EQing, uh, removing frequencies and compression and sidechain and adding then more effects and just building the track uh, into a more uh, believable, coherent thing. Uh, at the moment it's very, very basic. You know, but it sounds it's pleasant. So uh, we're going to take a look at uh, send and returns. So this is our send. And <clears throat> I will show you in the mixer what happens. There's two different ways we can uh, look at uh, effects and place them in, in Logic. We'll take this kick, for example. The signal comes out of, the sound comes out of kick 2, the, the input. It comes out of here and goes into this effect and down through. This is the signal path down to the fader. And then this fader goes across and out to the stereo out. <clears throat> excuse me, along with this fader, these all these faders sort of come out, have an output here, go along and out. If we insert an effect, say a reverb over this, it the signal comes out of kicked out of kick, the kick drum comes out and goes into the reverb, then down to this fader and across. So if we play it and we'll solo. So we can hear the wet and the dry. What does the wet and the dry mean? If I pull the wet, the wet signal is the reverb, just the pure reverb. The dry is just the pure kick. So here's the dry. And here's just the wet. That's nothing. So if you think about if you're standing in a hall and you do a clap, your ears will hear the clap, which is the dry signal. And then milliseconds later, it will hear the reverb that as the clap sound rattles around the hall, uh, the reverb will come back. So you will hear the original signal first, the dry signal with no reverb, and then milliseconds later you'll hear the reverb. And that's, that's how uh, reverb works. So we'd never have just the wet signal. You'd always have dry. That simulates, you know, listening to uh, a ball bouncing on the floor in a hall. You hear the dry, and then you hear the wet. It tends to be that we don't put reverbs on uh, or delays on inserts. You would put things like EQs on inserts, uh, distortions on inserts, uh, compressors on inserts, uh, but not EQs or, or sorry, not reverbs. What we tend to do is we send the, uh, the signal to a reverb. So what we do here is we go down to send and we go to bus one. And here's bus one, which is called aux one, confusingly on Logic. So we'll rename this reverb. Okay. So now if I go to sends, it now says send bus one to reverb. Okay. So what does a bus do? A bus, at this point, the signal comes out of kick into this EQ, comes out of this EQ, and then gets split at this point. So the signal travels on down the fader and goes across to stereo out, but also a copy of that signal gets sent over to this reverb. So we'll go and insert the reverb here. So kind of like this is mimicking now what we did up here. If you remember, we put it on insert. I'm going to insert one here and look at the difference between the dry and the wet. So this is the inserted one on the kick. It has dry and a little 30% wet. 
And when I default opened the reverb on the bus, it was fully wet and no dry because it has split the signal. We still have the dry signal coming through here. And this then is sending a signal over here and it's fully wet. So we can balance between the two. If you listen to this. Sorry, let's remove that reverb. So it's kind of mimicking the dry wet, but we have a full wet signal. And the reason we can do this is when we start to build a mix of a track of several instruments, uh, <clears throat> we tend to use one reverb. Uh, or maybe two, there's usually maybe a big one, a short one, but we want the track to feel like it's in the same space. So instead of opening up, f you know, seven or eight instances of reverbs, we have one instance and we can just bus then. So this is our hats, we can bus our hats over and the kick and a little bit of the snare. So let's send it to the reverb. And let's solo these guys. So, so now we're sending hats, kick and snare over to the reverb. And if I didn't put it on this insert, I would have to have three versions of it and th balance it by three dries and, and wets, whereas we can just... We can balance it this way. So, that is send and returns. We can have up to... 256 of these buses, uh, not that you'll ever need to use them, uh, you know, you might, in a very big complex mix, uh, you might have six or seven uh, buses, maybe a bit more. So there's bus two, bus two we could name as delay, and again we can insert our delay onto that, so just go and grab any basic sort of uh, tape delay, and now... And you can hear the delay then. And again, we have our own volumes for these. And we can pan so the reverb's right and the delay's left. So that's that's basic uh, send and return so we we would if you want the effect like to affect the whole signal like a a distortion or a, an eq an eq is a good example you would never bust the an eq you don't want to hear the original signal and an eq signal because it doesn't work so you just that would be an insert you can insert because we do nowadays have wet and dry controls you can insert reverbs and delays over uh, the across the channel, uh, it's not particularly efficient, and set, you just have more control with having uh, your pan pot, your send amount, and this amount as well. So it just just works out a little bit better, a little more efficient as well. Uh, so that's the difference. You have insert effects that go across the channel, and send and return effects, which are uses use buses to split the signal and send them over there. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at adding some reverb and and kind of what basic reverb controls do. All right, see you then. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.